So this is how I distill lavender. I've got a bunch of lavender I've cut. I've got a still that has four two foot sections that are four inches in diameter. The body of the still, the part that uh, boils the water is right there. It's an old keg. Condenser is right here. That'll go on top of uh, one of the four two-foot sections. I've got the uh, separator here, which is basically just a bottle. I cut a uh, hole out of the top and that collects the uh, hydrosol and the oil and separates it out and drains into a container. It'll catch the hydrosol, leaving the oil right up here. All that brown stuff settles out and uh, doesn't have any effect on the actual oil or the hydrosol. So the first thing I do is turn the still on. Got it hooked up to 220 and to 110. Got two electrodes in there. And after I do that, I start packing the pipes with lavender. Basically, grab a clump of lavender. Stuff it into the top of the pipe. Take a stick, basically, and press it. Grab another bunch of lavender and do that until each pipe is completely packed and full. You don't want to pack it too tight, but you just don't want air pockets in there where the steam can circulate and not proceed out of the still. Once I have these full and packed, I put the little rubber sealers on. And then stack them, tightening them with this clamp. Packed these with just flowers and I've packed them with just stems. Packed them with flowers and stems just to see what the difference is. And I think when the stems are in the mix, it uh, definitely lends more earthy kind of notes to the uh, scent. It doesn't detract, I like it. It's just uh, maybe a more complex smell and the flowers are just a pure lavender smell. I think the oil, frankly, is the same in both the stem and the flowers, though. I think the stems just have other other components that give it a more earthy smell. So I wrap these around. Tighten them up pretty good. And I just, I just do that for each one of them, stack them on top of each other. So when they're all connected, it's eight feet tall. One of the things I like about this uh, still is that I can put different uh, plant material in each of the four, four sections. Final step as far as loading up the still is to come and put this onto the still and tighten up the final ring there. And plug the uh, still in and start boiling the water. It's still plugged in. I'm going to then put the condenser on top of the still. With the, with the condenser on the still, I'm going to put the condenser at an angle of roughly 45 degrees. 
it's not that crucial distilling lavender what angle it's on but that's just what works in this space I have and so put this thing on at this point I'll just place the separatory funnel underneath the spout here and turn the water on now I've got the end of the condenser into the separatory funnel and I will turn the water on in this still got the source of water Ho green hose goes out into the white which goes into the blue cold water goes up the funnel or up the condenser and comes out the red draining into the floor and I have to do experiment with the uh, the rate at which you have the water on you want it as you're distilling you're gonna be feeling the water every once in a while just to see how warm it is you want it to be about room temperature you don't want it you don't need it to be too cold but you don't want it to be warm because that will mean that the uh, condenser is not going to be cold enough to return the steam back to liquid. So at this point I'm waiting for the still to heat up. You can feel it's very hot. It's cold right here. Really hot right there. <laughs> uh, and that's just going to continue to get hot all the way up until it comes out the condenser. I've got the water on a, a rate of, uh, well, coming out about like that. Well, the second section is getting pretty hot. Top is not. That's actually pretty cold. But right there, it's very hot. I like to keep the water pretty high because it allows time for the oil and the hydrosol to separate too low and then it's draining out too quickly. It has been about 45 minutes and I'm about ready to uh, stop the electricity and end the run. Another way of telling or determining whether the process is over is by putting some of the uh, hydrosol onto your thumb and checking out how much oil is actually in the hydrosol. There's not a whole lot of oil left in this, you can tell. It's evaporating pretty quickly. So I'm going to call it quits for this run. This is how it would look with just oil. It's very, very shiny. So 
So I drain the hydrosol out till there's about that much. I let it sit for maybe a half hour or so, just let all the oil rise to the top and the separation complete. And then I open the spigot here and drain the hydrosol out. Basically as much as you can. Of course, you don't want to get any oil. You don't want to, you don't want to And that's about right. There's going to be a little hydrosol left in here when I pull this apart. And uh, what we do with this is we remove this and then drain the oil into a container, put it in the freezer. Any hydrosol in the jar freezes and then you can pour the oil off. So this is really awkward to do with one hand. Basically I've got a container, I've got the oil. I'm just going to pour the rest of it into the container. That is all oil. Looks pretty nasty, but it'll all settle out and be crystal clear once it's settled. See once it's frozen, a little bit of hydrosols on the bottom, the clarified oils on the top, the cruds on the bottom, and you just siphon this off. Actually, I just pour it off into a funnel and uh, and then bottle it up. Three runs has given me about close to five gallons of hydrosol.